Are we rolling? Are we really doing it now? Oh my gosh, we are. This is insane. <laughs> All right. How's it going, everybody? Been a bit. Um, gosh, where do I start? Uh, yeah, so it's been a bit. But hey, good news. Threshold of time uh, is about to come out. Uh, in fact, by the time you're reading this, it's probably already out. So, I've had these cards for a bit. Um, I had a case. And, you know, I didn't want to do this too soon. But I feel like now is the best time to do this. I feel it's time to just go through the whole set, card by card. Except for one type of cards. So I'm going to show you all the rares, all the commons, all the uncommons, except for one card, one type of rarity, and that's the secret rares. I'm going to save those for a different video because those cards could, could uh, will bring brand new ways of playing the game. Um, these, of course, as well, but I really just want to really focus and also give the secret rares their own time and uh explain how they could be used in decks um maybe even uh build a couple deck lists to kind of explain how best uh the secret rares could be used but for right now let's spoil <laughs> i think i'm gonna record this at 8 30 and by the time i upload this i don't even know if it'll be midnight this might be spoiling the set and a couple hours maybe before it gets dropped if that whatever i did it first me 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 okay now okay now tripod i understand you're holding the phone kind of upside down so i need you to stay and not pop that phone out it's holding it down like like this like a down claw and it could just like just like psh, pop down so you stay there now, let's see here. I didn't think this through. Oh, here we go. Look at this. The back of the box. And I, I know some of these are not going to be new, but I want to go through every single one so you know each and every card that's in the set. So the card contains this deck. Sorry, this set contains 27 commons, 22 uncommons, 30 rares, uh, 8 secret rares, and 1 box topper. So we're going to be going through all of them except for 8. Um, mainly because I don't have them. <laughs> Sad. All right. Without further ado, uh, when you buy a box of Threshold of Time, you're going to get guaranteed uh, certain cards called box toppers. Now, one card you're going to guaranteed get is the new rule card for these new sets. Now, this set, this is the um, rule card for the archives and for the hailfires. And on this side, is the explanation of the rulings, the mechanics of uh, the machines, the real rebuild, rebuild mechanic. Wow, I should have uh, rehearsed this or did a script or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> this uh, uh, this ex explanation card explains the archives transform mechanic, the ignite and burst mechanic of hailfires, and the rebuild mechanic. Uh, which I'm debating on whether I should go through it or not. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes, because my main objective in this video is to show you every card, aside from the secret rares. <laughs> so you'll get the rule card, or that mechanic card, plus you'll get the new box topper, which is... Da -da -da, torn Asunder. It reads, pay one energy, look at your opponent's hand, and target one card from it, and have them discard it. Hey, more uh, discard cards from the hand for more hand control decks is always welcome. All right. Uh, also, don't forget that uh, each card, each uh, box hopper will have the mechanic card, the box hopper rare, and also one uncommon foil, kind of like that. You know, it's like an uncommon with the two star and then there's some shine on it. Woo, cool foiling. All right, just to give you an idea. All right, here we go. Number one of the new 
set six threshold of time is Manuscript of the Archivist. Let's center that a little bit. It reads, pay one life point. Your archive creatures don't lose energy during battle this turn. The archive creatures are very interesting. Um, they essentially assign... Uh, and I'll, I'll go through it once we get to those creatures. They're uncommons. So we'll see them in a minute. So here's number two, Canyon of Secrets. Target one of your machines in play and rebuild it, even if it and the rebuild target have already been rebuilt this turn. Send it to the graveyard and replace it with one of your machines from a zone that is viewable to you. So quick way I can explain machines, and it's super easy to, to, to talk about them. And because they're just, they're, 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 I feel like they're much more simple. And if you'll notice, I'm going over here <laughs> to grab two cards from my machine deck. So let's say rebuilding just means uh, you replace it with, uh, the simplest way I can explain it is you replace it with another machine from either the graveyard or your hand. So you would play this card. It is a machine card. I'll go over it in a minute. <laughs> and its ability reads, when this creature enters play, you may rebuild it. If you do, it gains one energy. So you re so you play that. It enters play. Now you can rebuild it. Rebuild it into that. It gains one energy. So now whatever this is sitting on, it just gained one energy. Now you can only do that once per turn uh, using uh, the abilities. But if you use... Canyon of Secrets, you can force it to rebuild again. Each machine can only rebuild once. So that, so this can't be rebuilt again because it's already been rebuilt. But if you use Canyon of Secrets, you can totally do it again. If you have another Canyon, and you can just force the second ability. And just keep doing the abilities. Uh, I have a deck specifically made. Because um, I, like, I like that mechanic, and so I have a, I have a really interesting... Uh, a, a deck that uses uh, those to the the best that I can think of to do. Uh, you'll see that eventually. Anyways, uh, number three. I should go through these faster. Oh my gosh. And I knew it. There it goes. <laughs> I think I leaned forward. Here, let's bring this over here. Bring the camera over here and I'll just hold on to this. See, can I... Da da da... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to hold on to this thing. Uh, well, there it is. Sands of the Broken Timepiece, everybody. Uh, it reads, target one symmetry in play and return it to the owner's hand. If you have less life points than your opponent, that opponent can't play cards of that name for the rest of the turn. Uh, if you have less life points, you can lock your opponent out of playing that card in response to you for the rest of the turn. Or... Um, let's say you, you know, um, have a silent irregularity of the chrono from a last series, last set, uh, that will remove your necessity, uh, to have life prone requirements. That's its after ability. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a card you want to really think about. I mean... Someone say this is a stronger version of Cove. I don't think so. I say it's, it, it complements it. It goes along with it. It's just another stun card to me. Um, but given the right timing, it, uh, it could be really, could really give you a massive advantage. So, okay, here, number four. Uh, starting off with the uh, newest, uh, our first uh, Hellfire card. And this is Hailfire and Brimstone. When this card is played, ignite it. It leaves play when a symmetry is revealed from your main deck. When you successfully summon or put into play a Hailfire, ignite it, then reveal the top card of your main deck. If it was a Hailfire, draw it. Uh, so uh, the way we play this usually uh, here, uh, what we've been told is when you play a card and ignite it, you just tilt it like that there. That's considered ignited. It Ignited. Wow. English, Alex. It's considered ignited. Let's go to the next card. Atlas Ablaze. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this card. This card is considered a creature when it is revealed. When this card is played, take one energy from your energy deck and use it to start a new pile. 
Target one of your creatures and play for each rarity star it has below three. That new pile gains one energy. So essentially, if you play it right, you could create a three pile with that. Uh, it's like Invoke, but better if it's played right. <sighs> Here's one of my favorite cards. Oh my gosh, here we go. Number six, Isla de la Cartas. I love this card. Talk about an answer to Vortex. Put any amount of energy from your hand into play however you like. This is a fantastic symmetry. Imagine someone turn turn one vortexes you. You can just play that in response to them, throw your energy out any way you like. You can make them all one piles, you can make them two and one, whatever, it doesn't matter, you know. As long as you put them on the field, and you don't even have to you're not even forced to use all of them. Put any amount of energy from your hand into play however you like. You can even put it under creatures. That's considered putting energy into play. But just so you know, that doesn't mean you can, like, put it down and I'm going to make it frozen. No, 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 no. No. Okay. You can't just give it, give that energy status effects or whatever. It goes into play and that's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's a fantastic card. Man, you can use that for anything. Um, here is number seven. Sales of the Fallen. Man, when I first saw this card, I thought it was upside down. <laughs> this is a fantastic card for the for uh, the new Leviathan support. It's a fantastic Leviathan support card. Um, uh, this card remains, and it's a symmetry, this card remains on the field when it is played and leaves play when it is targeted. Whenever a Leviathan enters play, add one energy beneath this card. When this card leaves play, move the energy beneath it to your Leviathans and play however you like. There's a lot of cards in this set that... <laughs> there's some really good cards in the set that uh, really help you to not lose so much energy. Don't you dare, Alex. Oh, my God. I just moved my hand forward, and I just smacked the tripod. Great. Um, it's essentially an energy piggy bank for your boats. And then when you target it with anything... Target it with any... Uh, let me see. Whenever... Let's see, uh, I don't know what you When this card leaves play, yeah. Field when it's playing, and leaves play when it is targeted. Okay, so what, it doesn't matter what targets it. Um, specific rulings, though, because you'd lose target. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but it's, uh, it's fantastic. That's a fantastic card. So here we go. Oh, <laughs> guys, if you loved... <laughs> <laughs> Professional burp, nice. Uh, if you love Crystal Cove, man, are you going to love Lost Cove Unveiled? Discard one card from your hand or field with Cove in its name. Then negate the effects of all other symmetry cards on the stack and destroy them. What a wacky, wacky card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't make a deck with this and not play two of this and then two Crystal Coves at the same time. I mean, if you really want to get that effect off, um, you're going to have to. Oh my goodness. Oh, did I do this wrong? Okay, hold on. That was number eight? Yes, it was. Okay. I thought for a second I reordered these wrong. I ordered these cards wrong. So here now, we're going to start getting into the archive slash drifter cards. And here is, uh, well, let me explain how uh, the archive slash drifter mechanic works. So you'll start with a drifter creature. Or a drifter ca character. Do I have one around here? No, I don't. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, I'll show them in a minute. Uh, and that drifter card is essentially you. It is you in on the board. All right, you're in the game now. <laughs> so, whenever you play a creature on top of that uh, drifter, the drifter is transforming into these archive creatures. So the way the deck works is you will only have one massive creature ever in the deck, ever in the game, on the field, and that uh, those creatures will stack, 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 stack on top of each other, and they will all share the same abilities. It's actually pretty nuts, and let's go through uh, the first creature. <laughs> it's a powerful one! Oh my gosh! It's Tala, Barricade of the Library. Oh my god. When this creature, when this, while this creature is in play, non-archive creatures cannot attack on the turn they are summoned. It gives it, uh, gives uh, your opponent summon sickness. Oh my gosh. 
what a fantastic card. Let's keep going. Everybody, it's Evum Chemical, oh, sorry, Chimerical Residence. Uh, its ability is, well, this creature is in play. Once per turn, you may attach an existing blank pile of energy on your field to it. Fan, fantastic. Next up is Avrachne, Conscript Crusader. <laughs> I'm doing good job speaking today. Great. The, this creature can attack opposing creatures up to once each during your attack phase. So, imagine... Imagine, imagine a creature with, with one creature with all these cards just stacked on top of it, and it has all these effects simultaneously. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane, I tell you. Okay. <laughs> Next up is uh, Rook, Archives Igus. I hope I said that right. Uh, while this creature is in play, if you have less life points than your opponent during your end phase, you may gain one life point. Hey. Not bad. B buried planes who? You don't need it anymore. Never did. Pfft. Next up is Drow, Untold Liberator. Uh, its ability is you may add any amount of energy from your hand to this creature during your energy phase. Keep in mind that it is only your energy phase, not your opponent's. <laughs> it is kind of hard to play it because you'll play it during your creature phase and then you can't use it until your next turn, but not that bad. And also, hey, for the next card, uh, you might think it's kind of hard to get these cards out. No, 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 no. You can search. That's the, one of the main uh, mechanics of archives deck. The archive deck is that you can search your creatures, especially with this one, Margana, Chimeric Librarian. Its ability reads, once per turn when this creature transforms into another creature, in other words, you'd play it, and then you'd play another one on top of it, and that counts as activating that one, because you're, this is transforming into the one you're putting on top. Got it? Good. <laughs> uh, once per turn when this creature transforms into another creature, you may search your main deck or graveyard for an archive creature and add it to your hand. And it says, shuffle your main deck if it was searched. Isn't the artwork fantastic on these archives? It's so good. All right, next one. <laughs> it's the last one of, of the uh, of the non-secret rare archives uh, or archive creatures. And boy, is it my favorite! Oh my god, it's your boy. It's Latif, uh, restorative catalyst. Its ability is vital DNA. If you have no, I like how I never said the names of the other abilities, but this one I'm saying because it's a beast of an, of an, of an ability. If you have no archive creatures in play, you may summon this creature from your hand or graveyard, and it gains one energy. The turn immediately ends. Vital DNA can only be used once per game. Imagine you put your energy and your whatever down, you play out your hand, and then just don't put any creatures on your pile. You know, you can add the energy on top of the uh, Drifter character. And then pass turn, and then say, well, this is how me and a friend have been playing it. Existence games come at me and correct me on this ruling or not, but I've been saying, pass turn, activate Latif in hand. And if he has no response, I can play it at the beginning of his turn, before he even draws cards... It hits the field, and his turn ends, my opponent's turn ends, and it's ba immediately back to mine. Insane. It's good for everyone that playing against me that this card can only be used once per game. Because, man! And the funny thing is, if I activate this and you cost, play Vortex, cause me to discard it, guess what? It's still activating in the graveyard pod, because it can activate from the graveyard. So I can just summon it from the graveyard and end the turn. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to our first rare uh, machine creature, Tachyon Torbillon. I'm going to assume that's how you say it. <laughs> when this creature is rebuilt, send one energy in play to the owner's hand and draw one energy. If any phase uh, was skipped or done out of order this turn... Activate this ability from a viewable zone to target one of your machines in play and rebuild it, even if it and the rebuild target have already been rebuilt this turn. It's kind of an ability to kind of counteract um, 
Time Glypha from the last set that could its ability could reorder the phases of a turn. Um, I don't know how effective that part's going to be uh, in coming games. Um, I never ran into too many people that played the uh, Time Glypha, but uh, when these creatures are built, send one energy in play to the owner's hand and draw an energy. So when it gets rebuilt, you bounce an energy from your opponent's hand, uh, from your opponent's uh, uh, from your opponent's field back to their hand, and you get to draw an energy. So it's not not too bad. Oh, here's a really good one. Another machine. Insatiable Abyssin. Uh, its ability reads, when this creature battles and survives, you may rebuild it. If you do, it regains the energy it lost during that battle. Just a re... That, now that's what I call a rebuild. Oof. Rebuild that energy. All right, next up. Flare, Trap, Mantis. When one of your machines attacks or is attacked, you may rebuild it with this creature. Uh, in other words, this would have to be in your hand or in the grave to activate. If you do, damage it takes is halved, rounded up, for the rest of the turn. Um, you have to go to the... Ask how... I don't understand how rounding it up, have, having it and rounding it up works. Uh, mainly because I'm really bad at math and it hurts my head to think about numbers. So if you if you know, you know. <laughs> for the rest of the turn, the for the rest of the turn, the original attack must also carry through if possible, regardless of playback. Uh, wow, an ability that ignores the playback rule. <laughs> How about that? Uh, yeah. So no matter what, if you do re uh, rebuild it, it still has to attack. The your opponent cannot. Call off the attack. Um, not bad. Not bad at all. Let's go to the next one. It is Lyrep, the Consortium Hierarch. Um, its ability reads, when this creature is rebuilt, you may activate this ability to make it unaffected by either opposing symmetries or opposing abilities for the rest of the turn. Not too bad. It gets rebuilt and it has protection. But remember, it doesn't happen automatically. You have to choose to activate it once it's been rebuilt. Ah, oh, this card is wonderful. Scissor slap, Sigor, Scoria, scissor slag. <laughs> slap him with scissors. All right, scissor slag, Scoria. Don't run with scissors. Just slap him with it. All right, uh, scissor slag, Scoria reads. <laughs> it is a machine hellfire, by the way, in case you couldn't tell. Uh, I haven't even bought up the. <laughs> creature types <laughs> earlier in the, this video. Who cares? <laughs> You'll see it when you get it. Um, once per turn per copy, you may put this creature into play from your hand on an existing blank pile onto your field. When it enters play, you may destroy one energy in play, and if you do, rebuild it. Uh, man, something that you can uh, summon from your hand. Not bad. Plus, it also has the... Uh, oh, hey, this is our... This is, uh, is this new, our first... Our first Hellfire creature? Is it? Oh my god, it is! It's our first Hellfire creature of the set! <laughs> it has that, uh, its ability, plus it also has the Ignite Burst abilities on the bottom right there. Man. It just keeps getting better and better. Hellfires are so strong. It is insane. Uh, speaking of exceedingly strong Hellfires, Palisades the Eternal Ember. Its ability reads, while this creature is in play, once per turn, you are not required to destroy ignited cards while bursting. Uh, the way ignited cards work is when you uh, have ignited... Uh, the, way, uh, the, reason that the way Ignite Burst works is that when you... Well, I'll just read it here. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it takes too long. I'll, I'll give a dumb way of explaining it. When you have cards that are ignited, let's just say that is ignited, okay? And then you choose to burst. Let's say this is sitting on three energy. And let's just say you have two ignited cards here. Hi. Hello. How are you? This is sitting on three energy, okay? I'll use this ability to burst. Well, normally when I would burst, I'd have to destroy one of my ignited cards. Um, so let's just say I, I, I had to do that. Well, now... Now this is bursting. And remember, you can only activate this on the attack phase. This is not going to hit for three anymore. Now it's going to hit for three plus the amount of ignited cards. So it's going to hit for four. But if I have two ignited cards in play, I activate this ability and then burst. This this sucker's going to hit for five. Talk about 
Power! Hailfire is all about that aggression. I love it. Here we have <laughs> the form is kind of messed up there. You can see it. Wow. Uh, who knows why that's that? Little little manufacturer error. Um, Magma Mountain Lavasis. Uh, its ability is when this creature enters play, you may add one Hellfire from your graveyard to your hand for each rarity you have in play. Um, the re the way uh, Hellfires work is that when you play uh, one card, one Hellfire card with the Ignite Burst ability, when you play another card of a different rarity, then this card of a different rarity will ignite. Now, now that I've played an uncommon here, I have to play either a common or a rare. And you always have to keep doing that. There is a card, there is a secret rare, that lets you ignore that ability, that mechanic. But for the main part of the Hellfire mechanic, you will have to keep alternating between different rarities. Um, so that each card uh, that was a different rarity from the last goes into play. Each creature goes into play ignited. Uh... The deck is mainly about swarming. Uh, this is an interesting one. Vengeance Behemoth. Its ability reads, If you burst this turn, you may discard this card from your hand to destroy one symmetry in play. Uh, honestly, I don't see um, um, it getting used that much, but it's still it's nice to have an option. To have that option. Oh, here's a, such a good one here. Uh, Forever Fire Snapdragon. When this creature enters play or attacks, you may ignite one of your cards in play. While this creature is in play, whenever a card is sent from the top of the main deck to the graveyard, you may also send the next top card to the graveyard. So, guaranteed mill two if you are, you know, if you're playing that kind of deck. Uh, of course, all these Hellfires have the Ignite Burst abilities on them. Uh, speaking of which, ooh, first Leviathan. Burning Fleet Val Vessel. First Leviathan creature. Hellfire Leviathan. When this cre While this creature is in play, Whenever a player attacks with a common or uncommon creature, they may send one energy in play to the owner's hand just before the attack hits. If they attack with a Hellfire, destroy the energy instead. Yeah, oh, I love this art. God, it's so good. It's so good. Um, notice the Leviathans uh, have a lot of uh, effects based around either moving energy or bouncing energy back to the opponent's hand. All right, next one, my favorite one, Ghost Ship Galleon. Its ability is, while this creature is in play, once per turn, your opponent loses one life point whenever energy is moved on the field or sent from their field to the hand. So when either one has happened, you get to burn them for one point of damage. Either uh, moving energy back and forth from one pile to the next, or even uh, taking uh, an energy from a stack and creating a new pile with it that's considered moving energy, uh, or bouncing energy back to the opponent's hand. If that happens while this guy is on the field, you can burn for one point of damage. Uh, but only once per turn. Alright, here's the cover boy. Uh, Noalag, the Crucible of Time. Its ability reads, while this creature is in play, if you have at least three different rarities among your creatures in play, you may attack regardless of any effects or abilities that prevent you or your cre creatures from attacking. Uh, when this creature leaves play, move two energy in play somewhere else on the same side of the field. I wonder if you could combine this with sails, and uh, since they are on the field, you can put this guy down, reversion him, and then pull two energy out of the sails, un from under sails, and move it somewhere else. Just an idea. But yeah, that is the cover boy. Isn't he pretty? Oh my gosh. Oh, this is an energy card. interesting card. Shiver Vault Glacier. It is our first Shardfolk. Here we go. Uh, its ability is you may activate this ability from your hand or field to discard the, this creature. If you do target a player, that player targets up to two cards from, from hand and puts them on the side of the field frozen. Those cards unfreeze and return to the owner's hand at the end of the turn. This is the um, thing I had to uh, had a question about this two existence games. The ruling on this card, it says up to two, and it says uh, if you do target a player, that player targets up to two cards, so they can choose between the amounts of zero and two. 
isn't zero an option? So even if you, like, use this ability, can't your opponent just, like, choose to not discard anything? Or not choose not no cards from their hand to put down Frozen? I don't know. I just think the wording in that is a little weird. Here, you can look at it again. Kind of read it and tell me what you guys think. Well, okay. Moving on to what, oh my gosh, what should have been a secret rare, but here we go. We're almost done with the rares. Carcery the Twisted Tree. Oh my gosh. This boy is insane. Why is it a rare? While this creature is in play, all of your energy in play is twisted. When twisted energy would leave play, you may pay one life point to keep it in play instead. So, uh, all the energy on your field while this creature is down here is uh, now considered twisted. Uh, whenever any of that energy will leave play, you can pay a life point to keep it. So, let's say, you, you know, in, uh, I have this guy's on three energy, and he's about to be hit with a bigger creature, whatever, to kill it. For each energy it has on there, I can just pay three life points to keep all three life points on there. Overflow doesn't matter. It's getting hit. It, it, I want to keep all three energy there, so... I can just pay three life points to keep its energy. And then it says Twisted Energy would leave play. So that means even when you pay for stuff with energy, like with this guy in the field and you wanted to play Vortex, you could just pay a life point for Vortex, Vortex instead. What the heck? <laughs> this card's insane. And it's beautiful, by the way. But yeah, yeah, that my opinion, that should have been a secret rare. Uh, here comes my baby. Anyone knows me, they know I love the Dimensional and Dust cards. They have been around since set one, the starter decks, with Dimensional Desperado, and here's the latest card. Ugh. Dustia the Oral Whale. Look at the space whale. Isn't he beautiful? Its ability reads, well, while this creature is in play, you may switch a creature on your field with a creature that has Dimensional or Dust in its name from your hand. Dimensional Rhythm can only be used once per turn per copy. Uh, okay, so I can s uh, switch a card on the field, a creature on the field, with another creature that has Dimensional or Dust in its name? Well, there are some Dimensional slash Dust creatures that when you put them in play, their abilities activate. So, yeah, that's not bad. If you have two of these on the field, oh my gosh. I have a deck with that in mind. I will show it to you guys later. All right, now we're out of the rares. Here we go, uncommons. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your first uncommon uh, archive card, and man, is it a doozy. In fact, I should just show all three of these things. Man alive, we have Eventide's Archive, the Great Archive, and Archive the Hub of Knowledge. You know, I do a disservice by not <laughs> kind of even get it on field. It's kind of, I, I, I zoomed it in really good. Uh, for, uh, oh, come on, I can do it <laughs> for this, uh, video. Because I hated holding up cards like this, but I still kind of have to. Uh, so yeah, all these cards are three, these three cards connect together. These are the first cards that link together. They have the link ability on them, or the link mechanic, I guess you should say. Um, all these, these are, these are three symmetries. And, of course, they go with the uh, Archive slash Drifter uh, um, archetype. Now, only one copy of these cards can be in your deck at a time. Uh, all three of them have the same main ability, which is search your main deck or graveyard for one Archive creature and add it to your hand. Then shuffle the main deck if it was search. After this card is played, it stays on the field until another card causes it to leave play. Um, and that's all three of those do that. So the Archive deck has a ton of search. These three cards plus the one creature, uh, man, it's insane. I can't wait to show you my, show you guys my, uh, to do a deck profile on my Archive deck. But they have this ability here called Link. You can kind of see it there at the bottom, this little bullet point there. It says Link. Um, 
it kind of looks like an incomplete sentence, there's a reason for that. It's because the, sen beco the sentence becomes complete. Excuse me. Professional. When you link all three cards together, the full effect of all three cards when they are linked reads, and I actually play them when I'm in-game. I play them like this. Uh, takes up less space to me. <laughs> Not bogarting the entire... Uh, the entire field. So it reads, uh, all three of them linked together, reads, when Eventide's archive, the great archive, and archive the hub of knowledge become linked, you may put all archive creatures from your graveyard into your hand. Your archive creatures may conduct an additional attack during your attack phase. Fantastic cards. I cannot wait to show you how the, the, uh, the ideas I have for that Fantastic. Uh, let me see. Am I putting this the right way? That that works. Boom. Wait. Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm restacking them over here, so I don't want to lose track. Okay. Thirty-six minutes. Gotcha. I'll pick up the pace. Um. The uh, next uncommon here is for. Honestly, I think. Why am I re reading off camera? I should just show you guys, and you can read it. Leaderless Faction. It is a symmetry. When this card is played, it remains on the field until you perform a deck recycle. Whenever a player's life points become less than their opponent's, rebuild a machine on your field, even if it and the rebuild target have already been rebuilt this turn. Or draw one card. So I, and also this thing stays in play until you perform a deck recycle. I want to see somebody combine this deck, this card, into a deck with the existence of Unknown Origins. I want to see you rebuild over and over again by, by constantly switching life points back and forth. I want to see that. Here we go. An uncommon Hailfire Symmetry. Crossfire Formula. When this card is played, ignite it. It remains on the field until the end of the turn. When you ignite a card, you may summon a Hailfire from your hand or graveyard onto an existing blank pile on your field. It just helps you with, helps you swarm against your opponents, and then you can just burst and hit them for massive damage. Uh, that deck really just goes so hard and fast. Uh, it's kind of insane. S speaking of insane symmetries, oh my gosh. Treasury of Treeford. Look at that mushroom. Kind of looks like a like another mushroom on another promo card. On a promo card we have. Oh well, I think that's uh, glistening undergrowth. Yeah. The ability reads: Look at your opponent's graveyard, graveyard hand, and the top of their main deck. Target up to one viewable card from each and move them to one of those either zones. Now you can look at your their hand, the top card of their main deck, and their graveyard. So basically. And it says up to one. So you can just... Uh, I know when I first read this, I thought it meant you could take one card from their hand, one card from the main deck, and one card from the graveyard, and just kind of reorder them. Have them all play, you know, musical chairs. Um, but no, you can choose a card... Uh, it says up to one. Well, zero is an option. Up to one. Zero is one of those numbers that you can choose as well. So you can just choose no cards from the graveyard. And it doesn't say that it can't be all the same zone. Up to one viewable card from each and move them to one of those other view other zones. So just pick a card from hand and one from the top of the main deck and then send them to the grave. Insane. So good. Speaking of so good, ha <laughs> ha You saw this earlier. Repel the thought stream. When this card is played, it remains on the field until the end of the turn. When your opponent draws a card due to an effect or ability, you may draw a card from the opposite deck. So whenever your opponent gets um, uh, gets uh, advantage, so do you. Imagine if you play that in response to Vortex, and then your Vortex, you know, you get Vortexed. So... Let's just let's just go over this again. <laughs> this is in play, all right. This is the foil version. Uh, your your opponent vortexes you turn one. You respond with that. You okay? They pay energy. 
both of you discard your hands, then you draw three from the main deck. Well, your opponent just drew a card uh, due to an effect or ability, so now you can draw a card from the opposite deck. They just drew three main, so now you get one energy back. Not bad. And hopefully, you drew some Glimpse of the Sanctuary, so you can just put one energy down, Glimpse, Invoke, you can just gain your advantage all, all the way back. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. The next card is a uh, Shardfault card. It is a Symmetry. Uh, Trifrost Floret. If any cards were revealed or frozen this turn, look at the top five cards of your opponent's main deck and put them back in any order. Uh, in response to uh, playing Treeforge Complex to burn your opponent... You reveal the, cop, uh, uh, the top card of their deck to see if it was a, a symmetry or creature. And let's just say it misfired. You reveal the creature. Okay. So they chose to put it back on top because they don't know if you have another Tree Forge Complex. And you play that. <laughs> a card was just revealed this turn. Now look at the top five cards of your opponent's uh, deck. Rearrange it. Put the symmetry on top. Now play your second one. Guaranteed a hit. <laughs> Guaranteed burn. Wonderful. Next up, Lucia's Throne. Unfreeze one energy on your field. Excuse me. Unfreeze one energy on your field for each rarity among your creatures in play. Then move those energy cards to one of your creatures in play. For each rarity star that creature has, below three, it gains one energy. Um, I don't play Shardfolk, but honestly... That doesn't sound too bad. I mean, you get to unfreeze energy, and if you're already playing those, uh, oh gosh, what is that creature from uh, set four that, uh, set four, oh, set five, that freezes energy when it enters play. That's fantastic. You can now unfreeze it, uh, and then move energy cards to one of your other creatures in play. For each rarity star that, that, that creature has below three. And then when it moves, it gains one. So you can like give another creature an unfrozen uh, energy and then give it an extra one. Not bad. Now, oh, I know someone in this course waiting for this. Here are the machines. Come on. Here are the uncommon machines. You're going to be using these a lot. Looming Autodross. You've seen this in the magazine if you've, uh, if you've seen the magazine, the last magazine that was released. This was in there. Its ability is during the turn this creature is rebuilt, your machines can't be attacked by creatures that are higher rarity than them. Uh, I love a lot of some of these uh, creatures have abilities that actually encourage lower rarity car, uh, creature decks. I absolutely love this. Especially this one. Steamforge Navigator. While this creature is in play, whenever machines leave your, leave your graveyard, search your main deck for up to two machines and add them to your hand. Then shuffle your main deck and rebuild one of your machines in play. So you can <laughs> search your deck for machines, add it to your hand, and then immediately rebuild it with one of those machines from your hand. Obstructica. Am I saying that right? Obstructica Dread Engine. Dredge Engine. The ability reads, this creature can attack two creatures at once during the turn it is rebuilt. Here's an interesting thing I just noticed. The rare um, creatures get names on their abilities. Like, this one is Protector of Relics. But... Lower rarity abilities don't have a name. That's kind of sad. That's kind of sad. It means that well, they're like less important. I don't know. Kind of makes me sad. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think if I did, I forget to read the ability. It says this creature can attack two creatures in at once during the turn it is rebuilt. Two creatures at once. I assume that it mean, this will take all the damage from both of those creatures simultaneously. Um, so just keep that in mind. Heals a, here is a Uncommon Hailfire. Reverse Rain Obsidival. I can't read that. And it's just this generic Uncommon. It has Ignite Burst. Uh, I mean, you need them for the, for the, for the ability to go. So, yeah. Another uh, Hell Hellcore Meteor ability is Ignite Burst. Can't complain. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Another one. 
Kindle Fire Hound. The abilities ignite and burst. Now, which ones are you going to put in your deck? All of them? I don't think that's a wise idea. Maybe one of each. I actually like uh, Hellcorn Meteor. I think it looks really cool. Uh, what's this? It's an uncommon Leviathan. Eventide's Armada. So there you go. Oof, oof, oof. Nice art by Yossi. Uh, you thought tree folks were only going to get the one twisted card? Nuh-uh. Here's Snowcap Sequoia. Let me move these over here so I can just <laughs> put them down over here. New Shard Folk, Venom Spire Monarch. Oh, look who it is. It's the Drifter cards. Funny thing about Drifter cards, when you open them in a pack, normal cards, they look like you'll see this. The back part of the card, you know, that says Exodus on it. But you'll know it's a Drifter card because it'll have the... <laughs> throw it off camera. It'll have the Drifter rulings. And those are the Drifter rulings uh, that I've, you know, sent pictures of people in the Discord. Uh, but yeah, there you are. And let's go and show these uh, Drifter cards that will be representing you. And all of them have really awesome abilities, and I think this one is the best one. Archive... Chancellor. Archivist Chancellor. Its ability reads, once per turn, you may pay one life point to target an ability and negate it for the rest of the turn. An ability, any ability. That means if it's active in the grave, if it's active, uh, someone activated a card in hand, uh, a creature with an ability and they're trying to have it resolve, um... Uh, something on the field, you can just target it, pay one life point, and negate it for the rest of the turn. So, Forerunner, you're shut down. Here's the next one. Archivist Maven. Its ability is, once per turn, you may move one energy in play somewhere else on the same side of the field. Nice energy move ability. Here is Archivist Curator. Uh, whenever another player draws cards outside of the draw phase, you may draw one energy. Kind of similar to... Uh, to repel the thought stream. Uh, and finally, Archivist Cardsmith. Its ability reads, this is a pretty interesting one. Once per turn, when your creatures or symmetry cards become the target of opposing card effects or abilities, you may target one symmetry in your graveyard and play that card immediately. You must still pay cost. Um, I really want to see. I couldn't think of any uh, decks to make with this thing. Um, because honestly, to me, that effect sounds situational. Um, but it is the next best ability next to Curator. Um, or next to... Uh, God, what is it called? <laughs> I just looked at it. Uh, Chancellor. But uh, yeah, if you can think of something to use this in... Oh my gosh, I want to see that deck list. So that's all the uncommons, everybody. Now we just got the commons left. And some of these commons are not, these commons, you think because they're common they're nothing? No, these cards are not nothing to shake a stick at. These are amazing cards. Here we go. Transmogrification. The ability reads, summon an archive creature from your graveyard to your field. I'm going to try and go through these fast. <laughs> uh, library litigation. Uh, this is interesting. When this card is played, it remains on the field until the end of your next turn. Your opponent plays with their hand and the top of their card of the top of their main deck uh, revealed. Uh, when this creed card leaves play, move one energy somewhere else on the same side of the field. This was very interesting during draft. I will say that much. Uh, just playing this and being able to see your opponent's top deck um, and their hand uh, for at least you know uh, a turn. Uh, well, depending on when you played it, uh, for a short while. Honestly, very interesting. Hand knowledge is always fun. Oh, man, you want to talk about cards that can replace staples? Or new staples, everybody? Librarian License. I've People have bought cards for me from this set, and I've just thrown this in there for extra, just just, just to be nice, because, man, more cards, more people need to have this card and just start brainstorming. I want to see the kind of decks that people come up with this stuff. Uh, 
ability reads pay one energy target an ability that is active or activating and waiting for waiting to resolve negate it for the rest of the turn oh my gosh <laughs> it does exactly what a uh, chancellor does uh but chancellor's only once per turn well that one you can just keep doing it you know as long as you have one uh here is a machine symmetry new rage cycles Draw one energy. If you rebuilt a machine this turn, you may also draw one card. So hey, if you rebuilt, you can draw two cards. Also, I love the framing around that text. Isn't that cool? The machine framing. Oh, it's so cool. That's a great card, actually, for machine decks. Uh, and here's another one. Complexity Gear. If you have at least three different rarities among your creatures in play, target two opposing creatures in play and switch their energy levels. I was just thinking... There's nothing really stopping you from putting this in a Hellfire deck. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Target two opposing creatures in play and switch their energy levels. That's awesome. Gotta really read this stuff. Even if it has a machine or a fire or something or a boat on the cover, it doesn't mean you can't mix it. You have to read the text. Read the card. Hashtag read the card. <laughs> Combustion Chamber. Each player discards one card from their hand, then they may draw one card. If a player discarded a Hailfire, they may destroy one energy in play. If a player rebuilt a machine this turn, they may draw another card. So you can either put this in Hailfire or machines. Gotta love it. Here's a staple for Hailfire decks, to me at least. Scarlet Drift Heights. Uh, when this card is played, ignite it. It stays in play until the end of the turn. Draw one energy. Uh, no, you think, oh, it's just draw one energy. Yeah, but, you know, if you need, you know, to pop something for burst, hey, this is the easiest thing to pop. Uh, hey, another staples contender. I think this is a staple. I think we're going to start seeing this card over and over again. Breaking Helver. You may target a drifter and negate its ability for the rest of the turn. Okay, so it's anti-archive. Uh, but the second part reads, draw one card or two if you burst any cards this turn. So it's a draw one either way, but for a Hellfire deck, it's draw two. Well, yep, I was going to say, burst any cards this turn. So you'd have to play it after you bursted during the attack phase. Now, I'll tell you what, you've seen all the different mechanics, and you've seen... Uh, we haven't gotten too much into Leviathan mechanics. Uh, because a lot of their cards are in the best stuff, I think, is in the symmetries that are commons. So here's the first one, Lost at Sea. Target one energy in play and send it to the owner's hand. You may draw one energy. What the heck? I love this. And you think that's good. Holy crap. Here we go. This is the king. Season of Torrents. Send one energy in play to the owner's hand. If you have two or more Levi Leviathans in play, send one energy from each opposing creature and pile and a pile in play to the owner's hand instead. Just a massive, it's just lost at sea on steroids. I love it. Dimensional Chasm. I think this is really good in machine decks, to be honest. Uh, target one creature on your side of the field. For each rarity star it has below three, target one card from a graveyard and shuffle it into the owner's main deck. You can use it offensively or you can use it defensively. You can use it for your cards or theirs. They're trying to search. You can always throw that out there. Tomorrow's today is yesterday's last week, I guess. What? So tomorrow's today. I'm sorry. I couldn't stop making jokes when I read this card. Uh, tomorrow's today is yesterday's uh, f Monday. Good. <laughs> Tomorrow's today is today's last week. Oh my gosh. I'll stop. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> the art's really awesome, too. Yeah, look at this ice attack on Titan going on here. All the Titans. Uh, if you froze two or more cards this turn, your common creatures receive one less damage, and your uncommon creatures deal one more damage during battle this turn. So if you're going to do a swarm of uh, shard folk, um... That's definitely a, a good option, especially if you're mass mass uh, freezing. So uh, here's not a bad card. A lot of draw, a lot of drawing cards. This, this set, wartime developments. If your opponent has more cards in play than you, draw one card. You can literally just hold this in your hand. Beginning of game, your opponent goes first. They play one energy, then play that. Well, no, actually, you won't. You'll wait for their second uh, energy to go down. Then you play that, and you draw a card. <laughs> Because if they have one energy in play, and then you play that, your opponent has more cards in play? No, you both have the same. 
because <laughs> that's in play. Hey, common machine. Visceral Val Vengeon. When this creature enters play, you may rebuild it if you do draw one card. I think I showed that earlier. Ugh, this card with the pun. Machine, Hedge Funder of Dreams. Uh -huh. I get it. Uh, when this creature enters play, you may rebuild it if you do it gains one energy. The art's awesome. It looks like it's going to the Machine Olympics. All right, let's go. <laughs> but do not Care all night. Unstable Chronic. I want to say Chronicler all the time, but it's Chronicler. <laughs> uh, while this creature enters, <laughs> when this creature enters play, you may rebuild it if you do move one energy in play to another creature or pile on the same side of the field. Hey, I'm the biggest fan of energy moving, so can't hate. Uh, here's a uh, for all you hailfire people, crank work con. Flag conflagration. I swear that sounds like a made-up word, but it's not. I swear. Get a dictionary. Look it up. Conflagration. <laughs> when this uh, creature enters play, you may rebuild it if you do destroy one energy in play. Also, it has the ignite burst ability, so you can use it in either machines uh, or in hailfire decks. Um, but you may rebuild it if you do destroy one energy. Honestly, if you put two of these. Um, into a Hellfire deck, you can then rebuild them. Rebuild one into the other. Destroy an energy in play. And then after that, granted you won't ignite it, but hey, it's an option, you know? <laughs> and that's the best we can have. Uh, uh, hope for is uh, options. Well, that got next up in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. How'd that happen? Oh well. Okay, one second. I kind of messed up my deck. I kind of had a feeling I was going to do that. Uh, here is. That was number 69. Here's number 70. Uh, Comatose Comet. Uh, it's Finally, we have a Hailfire that's not red. Just kidding. Uh, Ignite Burst. This is actually my favorite Hailfire, just because I prefer blue more than anything. Um, I actually put two of them in there. Why did I do that? Uh, okay, that was 70. So here's 71. Hey, look. We didn't forget about you, angels. Blue Blaze Angel. And it has the Ignite and Burst ability. That art is wonderful. Coming up next, Firefall, Fire, wow, it's late. Fire Nail Infernia, and it has the Ignite and Burst abilities. Oh, here we go. More, more Leviathans, more Leviathans, yes. Seabound Inquisition, look how beautiful that card is. God, the colors. It's so fantastic. Props to the illustra illustrator. Illustration uh, credit right there. God, that looks so good. The colors and everything. Oh my gosh. Uh, here we have Commandeered Caravel. Uh, yeah, just also great art. Uh, man, what is that thing on the tip of the boat right there? That looks like a mermaid. It looks like a horrible monster. But yeah, also the colors on this. Um, Fantastic. Un a common shardful creature. Episodic. Why am I burping so much? Executioner. Gosh, does anyone else think this thing looks like Siren Head? That horror monster? At me if you think it does. <laughs> common shardful, lucid, liquidity. Li oh my gosh. D what are you guys doing to me? Lucid, liquidity. Monolith. I did it. And that's a shard folk. It, I, I thought it was a shard folk angel when I first saw it, but no, just a regular shard folk. Uh, common tree folk. Rainforest ribbon root. Take a look at that art. Take a look at that guy's face. Go ahead. Go ahead. This will be in your dreams tonight. Okay. <laughs> Two cards left. We have Revolver Mushroom. Hey, Mushroom Support, what's up? Or Mushfolk Report, I should say. Oh my gosh. Looks fantastic. Good job. Good job on the art. That looks fantastic. Finally, I did not think I would see this. Phoenix Support. Val Dust Phoenixus. And it is both Phoenix Card plus, uh, being that it has the word dust in it, it is uh, uh, fits in so that you can... Uh, put it in the dimensional slash dust deck. Now, I will do another video, I promise, with the secret rares. 
Please. Don't at me. I'll do it, okay? <laughs> but yeah, gosh, what a fantastic set. I, I can't wait to show you the secret rares. They're so good. Especially the archive one, because archive is the best, the best new, 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 new uh, archetype ever. Archives are the best ones, next to Dimensional, of course. But anyway, yeah, that's my video. It was great, wasn't it? Eh? Well, anyway, uh, there's the box set, there's the cards, and you guys have yourself a great day. It's going to be awesome. You be cool, and don't, don't, uh, uh, don't be mean to each other, and treat others the way you want to be treated. And um, uh, s send, me, send me a dollar at me for my PayPal. <laughs> I need the money. <laughs> I'll stop right now. How do you end videos? Bye! <laughs>